Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is, has the tribulation started? I'll say it again. Has the tribulation started? Now, let me get, <laughs> let me just explain before I get started. I'm still not ready to say it has started. I'm getting closer, and I'm going to explain to you why. But it's a very big statement to say that the tribulation has started. And there's some very, very good reasons to say it has, which I'm going to cover today. Okay, so first, we're going to be looking at the signs, yes, why the tribulation has started, and the signs, no, it hasn't started. You be the decider here. First of all, the signs, why it has started. All right, every time I pray and I ask the Lord, has the tribulation started? Maybe that's a little grandiose to say every time, but almost every time I pray, has the tribulation started? I feel the anointing touch me. That's saying yes. Well, then Stan, why don't you believe it? Why don't you accept <laughs> if you believe God is really touching you, then why don't you believe that the tribulation started? It's a very big statement. It's a very, very big statement. And I'm just, I'm not ready to say it started yet. But we're going to discuss why it could be today. So, touch the anointing. That's the first one. Terry Bennett says so. Vicky Go Forth. I'm going to cover all these. Go Forth Parnell says so. Two cows say so. <laughs> I'll explain. Red heifers arrive in Israel. The Euphrates River has dried up. And other signs. The interpretation that God seems to be hinting at on the two cows, we'll start there, is that he has given the world seven years of plenty, which started September 14th of 2014, and seven years of famine or tribulation, and that clock started September 6, 2021. Wait a minute, I thought you said that Vicki Parnell and also Terry Bennett both say that the tribulation started on October 5th. Well, they do. October, 20th, uh, October 5th of 2021. Well, then wait a minute. Why is it that the two cows show that it started September 6, 2021? First of all, the explanation, then I'll give you the answer. In case you're not familiar with it, these two cows were both publicized to the public on September 25th of 2014. One was publicized, the black and white one, on that day, born the day before, and the next one was actually born the day. Now, why is that important? Because as we say a couple, and we mean two, or we say a dozen, and we mean twelve, Shemitah in Hebrew means seven. And a Shemitah only happens once a year, and only happens once ever seven years. So in that two cows were released to the public on a Shemitah, not an accident. My opinion, not an accident. It's a message. Now, what's the message? Well, if you look closely at the cows, you see the one cow has a perfect typewriter seven right across the forehead. The other cow has a scribbled seven right across the forehead. The one cow is black and white. Now, when your books are in the black, you're in good shape. When you're white, that means you didn't get the blessing. Someone else did. But when you got books in the red, that means that you're financially in trouble. So the prophecy, if it is a prophecy, and I believe it is, that these two cows are saying the last seven years of plenty started September 25th of 2014, and the last seven years of famine started September 6th, 2021. Okay, well, wait a minute, Stan. Back, back to my question here. If the cows say that the seven years of famine, and you would assume that that would be the tribulation, started September 6th on a Shemitah, then how come you have two other guys, or a guy to gal, saying October 5th, which is on the Feast of Atonement, is what they're saying when the tribulation really started? Okay, well, here's the answer. The answer is, we already know. God has delayed the season of sorrow several times. Truth be known, probably many times. He has given us chance after chance after chance as a nation, and of course, you and I as individuals, we know about, and also uh, the whole world. So just because he says seven years of tribulation started September 6, 2021, doesn't necessarily mean the tribulation started then. It could mean that there's yet still a delay, and I believe that's what it is. Now, did seven years of famine really start September 6, 2021? I believe it did. 
And that's pretty easy to look around and see, and it's about to get a whole lot worse. So, in summary, seven years of plenty started September 25th of 2014. The last seven years of famine started September 6, 2021. Now, let me tie this together because we're looking at reasons why the tribulation may have started. I'm going to read to you and explain to you one of the more questionable, the more misunderstood parts of Bible prophecy. Matthew 24, Jesus speaking. Many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. Has that happened? Yeah, but that's been happening for a long time. That's not giving us a date. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and that you see that be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I believe that that's talking about many of the wars through the centuries. However, I believe these scriptures specifically are talking about World War II, one and two. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be... Fa- okay, now, we know. Nation shall rise against nation, probably World War I. Kingdom against kingdom, probably World War II. But what about, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. Well, we've seen all of those, but, but look at the next word. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, when you see famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places, that's what divers means, all of them, all at the same time going off, then you know that you're in the beginning of sorrows. Now, is the beginning of sorrows the start of the tribulation? I don't think so, because... Perhaps you recall, I think it was December 26th of 2014, Bond Achi had a big tsunami hit, 160,000 people killed that particular day. And the day after I was preaching in Topeka, Kansas at our church, I could show you the very spot in the carpet where I took a step to the right and the Lord spoke to my heart, got a download in a millisecond and said that that was the breaking of the water. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall, not be, they shall not escape. So, when we're getting close to a woman having a childbirth, the first thing that happens is the water breaks. Okay, when the water breaks, there is no question that baby is coming. So, this is the beginning with sorrows. So, are we in the beginning with sorrows? Yeah, I think so. Yes. December 26, 2014, if I remember right, Banda Achi, 160,000 people killed, was the beginning or the breaking of the water. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, I know a lot of people think, ah, that's talking about World War II. No, it's not talking about the Nazis, not talking about the Jews and the Holocaust, because it says you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yeah, that's true. But here's the part that's not true. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. The Jews didn't betray one another. They all went to the gas chamber. They were all burned to sacrifice to Moloch and Baal. Shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So that was not true. Meaning these scriptures 9 and 10 are still talking about the future. So 7 was passed and is now here at 8 beginning with sorrows. Now, 9 and 10, they'll deliver you up to be afflicted, and they're going to kill you, be hated of all nations, and now there's more. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Okay, well, that's been going on for centuries. And because of iniquity shall abound, the the love of many shall wax cold. Now, I think that's something new. I think that I'm 69, and I think you would probably agree that the last 10 years, there has been a change in the heart's at least of Americans, and probably people across the globe, there's just not the love in their heart that there used to be. And I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. I think most people agree with that the last 10 years. Some people would say, oh, no, it happened before then. And he shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, I need to correct that. That doesn't mean if you survive the tribulation that you get your name automatically put in the book of life, you automatically get eternal life. That's not what that means. It means that if you endure to the end, then you are counted to be part of the corners not harvested. Meaning, if you didn't receive Jesus, you don't get eternal life. If you didn't take the mark of the beast, you're not cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. So, you are allowed to live up to a thousand years. But, at what time you sin, 
Then a morning star judge shows up at the speed of thought, hits you with the morning star, the lightsaber, fall to the ground, a pile of ashes and bones, destroying body and soul. So if you endure to the end, it means you're saved from the wrath of the Lamb, which is the morning star when Jesus goes, <sighs> and it goes all the way to the center of the earth. We've talked about it. It sets the mountains on fire, the hills melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. It means that you're not burned up if you survive to the end. You're given up to a thousand years or up until your first sin to continue. Now, this is another important part. Try to understand has the tribulation started. And this gospel of the kingdom should be preached into all the world for witness and to all the nations, and then shall the end come. I've heard people with TV programs say, boy, if you give enough money, then we'll be able to reach the world like the Bible says. Uh, that's No, it's not man. Because it says, and I saw another angel flying through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to everyone, every man that dwell upon the earth, every pe people, kindred, tongue, and nation. And he cried with a loud voice saying, worship God, worship him who made heavens and the earth and the seas and the fountains of water. For the, the day of his wrath is coming. Who should be able to stand? That's the angel that flies. And I believe every ear on the earth hears that. Worship God. Worship him made heaven and the earth and the fountains of waters. That's the last chance for them to get saved because, in my opinion, I'll show you my, lap, my, my chart here. My opinion, that happens about right here, and then Pentecost happens here, which matches with what Vicky Goforth Parnett was told. And then the next day, or on about, well, as what she was shown, as the bombs fall down, we go up. That's not the rapture because the definition of a rapture is being pulled into the air so you don't have to go through any trouble. That's, this is not the rapture. This is going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those that ready, those are the ones that get to go in. Here's another question. If you didn't go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, how can you be the bride of Christ? Well, that's a good question. If you're not of the marriage, are you the bride? <laughs> no. Got to go to the marriage. Go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, that takes place about four months before Jesus returns. Now, I explain all this. This is really deep stuff. And that's the reason God told me in my second vision, you got to write it in a book because some things cannot be understood by audio and video. Some things have to be read for a person to understand them. So he had me write the book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy. You can get it at prophecyclub.com. I think it's one for 20, but don't do that. I think it's 10 for 35 or 5 for 35 or something like that. Prophecyclub.com. I'd recommend the book. I think it's the best book on Bible prophecy outside of the Bible. Um, it's not that I think I'm great. I think that God simply told me some things because we're the last days. We're in the last days. He wants the people to know. Okay, so let's go on here. All right, now, the next thing is the ashes of the red heifer. Now, I've covered this in detail, but I'll briefly cover it. Daniel 9.27 says, And he should confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, possibly that covenant has now been signed. That covenant could be the new Ten Commandments that they're going up on the false Mount Sinai, or have, by now have gone up, might be, 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 be doing it today. And they're coming up with man's Ten Commandments. Okay, that's a big deal. Okay, when you have the three major religions of the world, Islam, Judaism, and, and Christianity, merged together, say we're going to make a new man's Ten Commandments. And that's what they've said. And it may be that the Antichrist is already on the earth because before the first seal is, is opened, he was falling endlessly and helplessly in the bottomless pit. Upon the first seal opening, then he rises out of the pit and he inhabits a already alive body. He's not born as a baby. He inhabits, he, he possesses an already born body. And that's when he confirms the covenant with many for one Shabuah or one seven year period. Now, here's my next point. It says, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Well, they aren't sacrificing animals in Israel, and they haven't for some 2,500 years. So what does it take for them to sacrifice animals? Well, first of all, they've got to have a clean Sanhedrin. 
They have a clean sacrifice. They have to have a clean altar. All of those have to be ceremonially cleansed. What cleanses them? The ashes of the red heifer. Well, that's the other thing. To have a red heifer, you have to have a perfect red heifer without any spot or blemish. And that red heifer has to be sacrificed outside the city. It's a picture of Jesus. And then they, what they would do is put the ashes of the red heifer into a kalal, which is a vessel made of the dung of the animal. Then they put a straw into the ashes and sprinkle it over the vats of water. Remember Jesus turned water into wine, those water vats, that's what it was. Sprinkled it over the vats of water, and those, that water becomes ceremonially, ceremonially pure. Then they dip, dip hyssop, which is like a weed that grows wild in Israel. I've seen it. And they dip the hyssop into the water and sprinkle it on the Sanhedrin, on the priest, on the sacrifice, on everything that has to be cleansed. So they don't have that yet. So they can't start animal sacrifice. But as I just put in a program last week, they're practicing praise and worship songs for the temple. So it may be that the covenant is confirmed. I don't know that. Probably nobody knows that yet. But there's been no ashes of the red heifer because the red heifers are still alive that they plan to kill and sacrifice. There's no temple yet, but that doesn't take long. I believe they'll pull out the, temple, uh, the, the tabernacle that Moses drug around out in the wilderness for some 40 years. It's still good today. They'll pull it out. Power of God, supposedly, at least in the days of, of Moses, entered into it. Now, whether he had entered it these, day, these last days or not, I don't know. But anyway, they pull that out, erect the tabernacle. No animal, no animal sacrifice could start when Israel gets control of the temple site. But it could very well be that Israel now is saying they're willing to give uh, a Palestinian state. Okay, so what does that mean? So Israel gives the Palestinians a state, and then, of course, in return, the Palestinians have to give the Israelis what they want. What does Israel want? We want the temple back. We want to be able to sacrifice. We want to build the temple. It's not going to be a stone building, 42 years building it. But it could be very quickly all put together. And then the last point is control of the temple could start when Israel gives the Palestinians a state. That may be soon. So could the tribulation have started? It could. Am I ready to say it has? Not yet. I'm getting closer, but not yet. So when we look at this tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, the seven seals, the Lord told me, this is the audible voice, seven seals play over seven years. Seven trumpets play over seven months. All conclude here. Seven vials play over seven days. All conclude on the Feast of Trumpets. But in the middle of the tribulation is when the two witnesses shows up. John eats the book. Uh, there's war in heaven. The devil is cast out. Then he inhabits the, the body of the Antichrist, was the Antichrist, but then it becomes Lucifer in the, the middle of the tribulation. Let's keep going. I read this the other day, but I'm not going to read all of it again. But is, is it a coincidence that five red heifers have just arrived in Israel just as it's time when they might be getting control of the temple back? All of that's important. Then... Israel has now announced that they will tell the United States uh, nations, and they did, that they are now finally ready to agree to a two-state solution. All just in time for the tribulation. I'm going to say it could be that the tribulation started all the way back on September 6th of 2021. Who knows? But we do have two people, two credible people, Bennett and Parnell, that both say October 5th. How do you get two people that don't know each other, don't talk to each other, that all come up at the same time where they both said, the angel Gabriel appeared to me and told me that the tribulation has started. That's huge. Well, if it's so huge, how come you don't accept it? Look, it, don't pressure me. When I'm, I'm ready to say the tribulation has started, I'll say it, and that may be very close. In addition, so here's another place where they're saying that they're willing now to establish Palestinian state, which means they're saying... We're willing to give up the land it'll take for us to get the temple back. And that's where they would start animal sacrifice. Of course, then the abomination of desolation comes in. The Antichrist sits on the Ark of the Covenant, proclaims himself God. The, the uh, enemy of the beast says that's the guy, that's the man God. Got to worship him or be killed. Another reason. Terry Bennett. Now, I'm going to take some time on this. No, I'm about out of time, though. 
December 10 through 14, for four days, the angel Gabriel kept coming to him and telling him that there's going to be three sets of seven years. Got it? Three sets of seven years. And told him the primary thing during those years. The first seven years beginning in 2008, he said it's going to be economic. And of course it was. The next set of seven years beginning in 2015 would be about big government changes. Well, what did we see? We saw 2016 and DJT and all that sort of stuff. We saw that. 2016, 2020, all, you know, the, the, all the Trump stuff. So it was a lot of governmental changes. But the last one, he said, was religion. Well, if they've just signed an agreement between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism to form a world government, guess what's coming next? That's right. They're going to start pushing us all to receive this new world government so we can all have peace and we can all be happy. Period one, he said, is economic. I'm going to let you read that. I'm running out of time. Period two is governmental changes. Period three is religion. And he said he saw a lot of things taking place that are now taking place. However, I want to talk about this. Period three, 2022 to 2028, he says. However, the way my hand counts is 2022, 2023, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So it may be 2029. I don't know how the math all works out on that, but Apophis arrives in 2029. Anyway, he goes on to say, the governmental troubles will be in preparation for, particularly in Europe, the arising of the spirit of Antichrist, the coming new world order, then the spirit of Antichrist and the false prophet spirit, a one world religion. It will be a combination of three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, brought together to form a world religion. Those three will be combined as a compromise, a mixture, to get everybody on the earth to all come into those different religions, okay? There, here's where Go Forth Parnell, Vicky Go Forth Parnell says, Gabriel spoke to me and said, Daughter of Heaven's Courts, hear my words this day, this moment of time. I bring you official tidings. And she goes, I'm, gonna, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to ble breeze on through it quick. But he said, A time of trials, both of testing and trying, has arrived. Now, that didn't say the tribulation started, but later it does. It has begun. It starts right now for your world. Now, she saw this on 927, but she was made to know it would start on October the 5th, which is the Day of Atonement. The time of tribulation has now come upon your wor world, October 5th, 2022. Let it be known this time of horrors and horrors of your world shall last for 70 weeks or seven years in the calendar of your world today, or time times the dividing of time, or see, that would be, well, it's going. Then uh, here's what Terry Bennett was told. He said, so the angel visited him on April the 2nd, 2022, and he said, Ch Revelation chapter 5 is now occurring in heaven, where the angel said, who is worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof? Then, that's, in other words, the, the book of judgment and the seals are about to be opened. Then October 5th, he was told, 2022, 8.45 that morning, the angel Gabriel showed up, blew a shofar, and said, it is time. The first seal has now been broken. That's two credible people saying the tribulation started. Well, then Stan, shouldn't you believe it? Hang on, hang on. Give me a little time. That's a big statement to say the tribulation started. Also, we see the Euphrates River has dried up. Now, there's still water in it. But there's probably, I haven't been there, but there's probably a place across there to where if the kings of the east wanted to get across to go over and join the Battle of Armageddon attacking Israel, probably even all right now they could get across there, whereas they never could before. So all of these things, the red heifers, I mean, so many things, saying yes. So here's the why, no. Daniel chapter 7. There was four beasts. The first was like a lion. I'm going to skip all the explanation, which is England. The second one is the bear or the Russian bear. I'm going to skip the explanation. The third one, here's the point, is the Islamic leopard. And the beast I saw was like into a leopard. That's Islam. Oh, how do you know that? Well, okay, that's a fair question. Go look up leopards, where they live, 
print a map. Go look up where the Muslims live. The primary Muslims print a map. Overlay the maps, and you'll see this. You'll see that where the leopards live, that's where the Muslims live. They fight alike, they eat alike, they mate alike. It's, it's, almost, it's a scary. I mean, I made a whole program on it, but we don't have time today. So it's the leopard. Was like unto a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. We have not seen a caliphate of four nations come together, Islamic nations come together and work together as one unit yet. Now, does that necessarily mean that the tribulation can't start? Well, I used to think so, but I've changed my mind. Now, I don't think so. I, I think that the tribulation could start without that. So, whole point is this. It could very well be. It could very well be that the tribulation has started. And if it has started, we're going to see all kinds of wars and things like that. We've run out of time today, but it's, it's all very close. Very close, my friends. Let's talk about Joseph Kitchen. I actually cooked this loaf of bread you're seeing here. It takes me about 10 minutes to put the ingredients together, put it into a bread machine, push a button, two hours, 20 minutes later, I get a loaf of bread out like that. Now, if you cut that loaf of bread that weighs about three pounds, the loaves you get in the store have most of the good stuff removed. The loaves you get in the store are about a pound. That's three pounds because it's got the good stuff still in it. Cut that into 14 slices. And if I eat a slice in the morning and the afternoon, I'm satisfied. So on that basis, one loaf can sustain, and it says everything we want, can sustain a person, one person for a week. Based upon that, it'll get you excellent nutrition. It tastes good. Long storage life. 10 minutes to combine the ingredients. 2 hours, 20 minutes to make it. Other wheat that you order arrives in paper bags, which means bugs, rice, humidity can get a hold of it and ruin it. But at Joseph Kitchen, they send it out in 100 mil thick buckets. Gives you long shelf life. It's stackable. It's nitrogen infuses that hopefully gives it a lot much longer shelf life, kills bugs and things like that. Easily resealable. Keep in a climate controlled area. And they have it in stock. This is a picture, an actual picture of part of the warehouse. Here's another picture of the, these. Actually, each one of those boxes holds 2,500 pounds of wheat. And I think they've got 54 of those boxes, a bunch of them. So then you have to decide how much food you want. You want food two people one year, four people one year, six people one year. And if you want to make certain you have it when the electricity goes down, you can also get yourself a solar generator all at josephskitchen.com josephskitchen.com